Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. Let me just show you this quickly. This is the Thursday edition, the 13th of July. Look, here's the E mini up 20 at 4527.25. This is the one minute chart. When you get a cluster pattern that goes sideways in a long rectangle formation, invariably, if it just pops out of the rectangle high and then goes halfway into the uh, rectangle, the midpoint, and then it takes that out, there's a really good chance that not only will it take out the left side low, but if there is a, a closing price below that on any one bar that you're looking at, there's a one minute bar, then there could be a retest to go back into the rectangle just to say, wow, that happened so quickly. I didn't say goodbye to all my friends. And that's where you get the test to say, okay, is that just a pop-up because the trend has now turned down in the one-minute chart? Or is that something more serious? Then, of course, this is a 10-minute chart on the right. But let's just stick in the – I haven't done anything with the five minutes this morning. Let's just do that right now. And I, I want to do this on the spot because this is live and it, it shows you – techniques that work over and over again. So now what we've got, we're looking always for a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology from the most obvious lowest low. Let's see, that's the lowest low there. Let's just count the peaks, get on the pointer. There it is. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. But wait a minute. Yes, you got peak D and you're pulling back. But look, that green nine period moving average is still strong. Look at the 10 minute chart. It went to this alternate count G, and the technicals are still very strong. <clears throat> ha! So the one-minute chart is the rudder. The rudder is the one that gives you the direction. It's a little speedboat. It's not a super tanker. Ten minutes is a super tanker. This is a little speedboat. So here you've got the pullback under it. Now the pop to the upside, the nine-period moving average turned down, negative. Now you're getting a test of strength. If in the next, oh, I'd say five to six minutes, that's five-minute, one-minute bars, there's a, a close under 45.28. Be careful because the low that was made just a moment ago at 45.27, um, that becomes a target. Break under that, and it says, okay, now that should start to impact the week, the ten, the five minute chart. But if there is a pop from this level. And look, the MACD is negative, the stochastic's down at 20. Whoops, it just popped to 33%. The uh, on balance volume's okay, not great. Uh, but what we're looking at here is that that nine period moving average so far hasn't turned up, but it it has turned up, but it hasn't crossed positive. So we'll watch that in the meantime. I do think that we've got a lot of pressure right here to say, let's take a little bit off and we'll see how, you know, this is the 10, 20 time is where we start to see the next phase of the market. Let's see where it's trading uh, at that particular time. So I just wanted to go through and show you the, the technique that I'd be using right here to say, yeah, maybe if you got short uh, the E-mini, uh, you've got to know the pattern. The pattern says you can go underneath. In fact, I'm going to lower it just to show you that you've got to go to the left side low bar. That's that one there for this particular technique. Um, and we'll see what happens. All right, but there's still internal strength. There's buying and the buying is showing up. So let me show you exactly what I'm looking at here. Um, so we'll go to the we we'll go to the Dow, I and you. So the Dow is attempting to get towards the thirty four thousand uh, six hundred area. Thirty four five eight eight was the high on the sixteenth. Yesterday's spike went to thirty four five eighty six, two points below, less than two points in fact, and it closed towards the low of the day. And a lot of people thought that was a very negative candle. Technically, uh, that's evening star uh, re uh, inverse uh, dragonfly type pattern. In the, I'm I do not put all that much import into these uh, these patterns. The hammer, the hammer, unless other things happen, you can't just treat it in isolation. I love little doji candles, tiny dojis that say, "Hey, we've got a, a reversal here that we're going to go from the uh, spike at peak D. Remember fourth highest peak." to that pullback, and now you've got a rally, and then you had the cup 
go to the arch formation. You're rotating in this rectangle formation. Now you've got another, look, another cup formation right there, right there. And it's trying to rally. It's trying to rally. But it says there's a lot of resistance out there. If we make a big spike do the 34 800s in the next two sessions, that includes today, tomorrow, and Monday, that will be very positive because we're starting to break into an area that we haven't been in for a very long time. So, but this is a different, they all have slightly different patterns. Look, the, the S&P up 25 at 44.97 has this cup formation. Now, this cup formation very often has uh, a trend line, and this trend line that was broken yesterday. So that's useless. I don't even do that anymore. I just take it out. Once once it's broken, it means nothing. But what you do have are higher highs and higher lows in this very difficult pattern to trade, but not a difficult pattern if you're holding a long position. For instance, we're still long from October in the Dow and the uh, the three times long, and that gives us a cushion for uh, both the downside and the upside. But in the meantime, what we're looking at is short term. This is an area, a near recovery high. But can you believe that the April high, where's April right there? The yeah, April high of 45.93, we're at 44.96. We're under that. But would you believe last April when things were really looking negative <clears throat> that the S&P would plummet down to 34.91 from 48.18? And then... It would take an entire year, over a year, before it even got back to that level. This is one of the longest bear phases we've had in a, in a very long time. Uh, when you're looking at monthly charts, but when you're looking at this weekly, this left side, right side price time match breaks out. Um, this is that. This is that pattern that says it's walking the nine period moving average. So that just says very clearly. That in the S and P, I don't have to make that red anymore because it only pulled back for a brief period. In this particular pattern that we're looking at, yes, we're getting to some kind of a resistance area, but we've got to look at the weekly charts in all cases. And the weekly charts here, the nine is very much the price is way above the nine. The nine is way above the fourteen. That's fabulous. The MACD is still seeing the histogram very wide. <clears throat> distance between the nine period differential and the 26 period exponential moving average and a flat stochastic at 91.53 is exactly what you want at some point it will go down below 80 but at this stage it's acting really well if you look at the qqq big spy look these little this, this kind of pattern here is more hysteria and just big gaps but small candle intraday so the the initial move is the move and then it just kind of stalls I get very nervous when I see that. That's the QQ, and the nine period, the nine period moving average is still way above the 14. But look, the MACD hasn't been able to cross positive. It's down at this particular point. The histogram's negative, so does it say, oh, when this breaks to the upside, man, you've got a lot of upside. But does it say there's a divergence here? To the stochastic at 75 percent, the MACD weak. It just says price has gotten away from the tech bills and that's kind of the way i'm looking at it right now but that weekly chart is very strong iwm was leading the pack and today it's still leading the pack that's the small caps but the monthly chart looks really needs a lot to break out dow's up 98 s&p's up 23. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So let me just type this in. A long rectangle, rectangular, lure. A long rectangular channel can last a lot longer than your patience. So every time in this, you think it's going to break to the downside. What is it? It goes to the upside. You think it's going to break to the upside. It goes to the downside. You think it's going to break to the downside. It goes to the upside. But now it's vulnerable. Why is it vulnerable? Because the nine period moving average crossed negative and it's starting to lose the power of the upside. But you don't ignore that 30, 45, 27 support level because every time you think that it's going to break to the downside, someone comes in and pops it to the upside. So this is the most difficult time to be thinking, do I buy the bottom and short the top and just keep doing it until I'm wrong. That's one of the ways to do it. But to know that you're absolutely wrong, it's already had one test where it's broken to the upside of the after the midpoint was taken out and gone to the top and failed to break to the top. That just says there's at this point there's a little bit more weakness. Now what I like to do is this I'm going to do this and let's see how long this one lasts. I often do this. I give you a trend line, we just keep it there forever. Okay, there it is at 45.30. It's about 29.50. It's called at 45.30. That's the line to watch. If it goes above it this time, it says it's going to be internal strength. This is the opportunity to break above 45.32. If it fails, it goes to 45.26. Now you've lowered everything. Now your, your major resistance is at 45.29. My thinking right here, because the MACD is weak, the Cassidy is weak, everything's weak, and the nine period is under the 14, is that there's more selling pressure than buying pressure. But you've gone from 9.30 to 10.20. I mean, almost an hour in a one-minute chart. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, talk about numbers. Look at this. Isn't this fascinating? Schwab. Uh, let me just do this. Schwab. We had that Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave volume climax. Volume price climax. Back in March. Uh, that was at 45 round number low on the 13th 
of March. And then the rule of thumb with this particular pattern, and we've seen it in the KRE. I'm just going to, I'm talking numbers, I'm talking about bars, right? So the KRE did the same thing. And we did have a position in it, but then we're pulling back like that. We got out. Um, it had this Chapman Wave price volume climax on the uh, 4th of May at 34,052. And then it closed a very short while later, it closed above that gap down high. And that gives you the rule that within 28 sessions, if it can close above that high, it can go higher for 28 sessions. If that's successful, it can go for 56 sessions. Well, here we are, there's 28, I think we had 50 something right now. And sh uh, whoops, that was KRE. And KRE is trading at 4382. Uh, and that just says with the earnings, the bank earnings coming in next week, the market's going to be under a lot of pressure. I think it's going to be mixed earnings. Some are going to be great and some are not going to be very good. But I'm watching this very closely because finally the weekly chart of the KRE, S&P Regional Banking ETF, look at this. The technicals are starting to move up. But the 9 period moving average is making a W formation. Price is gone for the first time. There's a chance this week that it can close above the 4228-ish, uh, was that 42? Give you the exact figure. 40, oh, 4302, nine period, sorry, the 14 period exponential moving average, which it hasn't done since way back in the week of the 17th of March up in the 64 area. There it is at 43, having hit the uh, 3452 low. So this is the first time that we're going to see is it possible in this, I think there's going to be some kind of a rotation correction coming at this particular point, but is it possible that we are looking at, um, we're looking at the financials, maybe after being so weak for so long, actually having a bit of strength? Here's the XLF up 11 cents at 34.58, leg C, uh, trying to get to a D, the 200 period moving average is almost like a fulcrum between the low and that moving average and the high that was made yesterday. So we're getting a little bit choppy, but is it possible that this actually starts to work? And that'll be fascinating because it's just a chance that we're looking at some of the areas that have been really strong lately, just taking a bit of a breather. We'll see if that's going to happen. But what is important, and I'm going to just jump here to the IAI, IAI is trading very nicely at, uh, at 93, up 64. This is the I AI, is the broker, dealer, and security ETF. We are still long from 45s. But most importantly, um, this is pattern that's the rectangle pattern that is the same as the trading band that we were looking at in the uh, one minute chart. See this trading band? It says this whole 93, 94 area is going to be really important because if it fails, it goes back into the rectangle. If it can actually break out sharply, go to 95.80 or 96.30 any day next week. It doesn't have to be the full week, but any day. That really changes the scenario. It means that'll be peak. That'll be peak A, peak B, gray, because it, all the technicals are still very weak. Let me put that in here. I was asked about it, so let me just do that now. B, and this is another gray A, because it hasn't taken out the left side low of 84 something. And this is B, and now started a gray C, and the stochastic still only at 58% of the MAC. This is the weekly chart. MACD has turned positive, but the 9 p moving average has a way to go to turn up. So this is all going to be fascinating in this particular time frame. Let's go back to our one minute just to see for fun. Uh, right here, did it go back into the rectangle? We went under it. Now we're looking at this whole area of 45.29 to 45.30 as being very strong resistance. If we break above it, it says, wow, look, that nine period moving average in the week in the five minute chart is still strong. It refuses to go down and cross negative. So is the um, the 10 minute chart. So I'm just watching that. OK, now let's get to some of our uh, things we want to look at here. Gold is down a little bit now. Oh, no, it's up. It's up to it was down a fraction before. It's uh, this is a nice leg B. In the G in the, in the uh, at G at GC, this is a continuous contract. Wow, that weekly chart needs so much energy. And the the reason. So we've gone along in the in the gold sector today, but the only reason is not because of so much the chart formations, which I'm not that impressed with in gold, but I am impressed with the fact that finally it's recognizing that the dollar, which is down again, down 56 ticks at 99.99. 
oh, Chuck 1999. We used to have those Chuck 99 uh, back in South Africa, and I had it in England uh, when I was there. That's where you take a flaky. Anybody know the Cadbury's flaky? And they put it into the soft serve cone in the middle. Um, well, well, so anyway, so what we're looking at here is 99.98. That's the lowest it's been since way back in, was that uh, April something of last year? It was March, April. Yeah, it was April of last year. The low was 98.31. And it's almost like a, an inverted V-shaped pattern. A little bit of a sideways kicker there. So I'm watching this, and I have to tell you, the EUR, USD, is responding as well. It's up very strongly. It's hitting the trend line that I was looking at in this cup formation, the second cup formation. Dow's up 90, uh, 92, S&P's up 21. We'll be right back. Let's check out one minute chart. Is it breaking down? Yes, it is. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So the reason why I wanted to see, show you this unfolding, that one-minute chart, the eight and the five and the ten-minute chart, the E-mini, is to show you the exact process that we're looking at in the general market, how the 90 EMA was so strong has been and still is in all those key indices and how long it, it's either a severe decline that takes it down to the negative area. Look at this. This is the USD JPY, US dollar Japanese yen. I talked about this the other day, little mini rectangle at the top at a peak E. 
and then it starts to break down. But the nine was very strong. And all of a sudden, three days ago, crossed negative. And now we've gone from the 145s down to the 138s, just in a one whoosh like this. Very sharp move down. And yes, in the weekly chart, it is a C. But if you weigh under the previous high, you can fade it to C. All the technicals are suggesting here that the nine period moving average is still strong above it. So it should be a process in the weekly chart, unless it's an immediate smash to the downside. So just in context there, look at the EUR USD, very sharp move leg D to the upside, uh, hitting resistance here, it's at 1.118. Uh, that is really outstanding action. MACD is good, stochastics at 92%. Nine, price is way above the nine, so it's a little overbought. I don't have volume here because this is just an, um, an index. So this is gonna be interesting because it takes time. So the question came in, is it a good sign when the small caps and the specs start taking off? And my answer was to uh, seven in the den, yes, because it means that there is a potential rotational correction that holds the overall market up as the overbought sectors or sector <clears throat> takes a breather. And, and I said we will discuss that. And you can see exactly what's happening here. Look, if you go to the SMHs, they were taking a breather, just a sideways action. It's still sideways action because 155.94 was a high in the 16th. Today it's gone to 156.69. Leg D, 159 was my longer term target, going all the way back. Oh, this is the weekly chart. Let me just show you, going all the way back. <clears throat> but I thought the digestive phase, which is what we've had, was something we could trade. We did trade it with a short position. We took profits and got out. Um, but yes, the high that was made back in January, I think of 2022, at one, in the 159s. So you can see, and uh, I didn't, yes, I drew this in for the first level, the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. Now there's a second level. Where does that go to? That's a little steeper, so it goes there. Yeah, and it comes in this week. 159s was the target. All right, so um, it's done exactly what you would look at for the mirror image on the left side, the number of bars down to the right, exactly to the day. 83.49 was the low the week of the 14th of October. There's a weekly chart, and here we are, the exact number of bars. In fact, you could invert this. I wonder if I should do that now. Let me just do this. Um, <clears throat> No, I, I was going to just take a picture of it and then flip it upside down. I don't need to. Here's your, this is your base right here, the, the week of the 7th of January of 2022 at 159.35. Remember, we were looking at this. I think we even talked about shorting that. I just don't remember if we did that at all. Um, anyway, so there it is. So the, the length of time, look, the nine period moving average was so close to turning down three, four days ago, and it didn't. Look at the Dow. The nine period moving average was, oh, it was like one day away from turning negative, and it didn't. So as long as that nine uh, is over the 14, it helps. And look, the weekly chart was just ignoring everything. Well, wait a minute. Is this live in, in action that we're looking at today? Let's see what happened to the one-minute chart. Look, one-minute chart, um, pink, nine period moving average. As we're speaking, it's about to flip again to go back into the rectangle to try to test that resistance level. But that five minute chart from that peak D, trough A, trough B, it has not budged. That nine is still almost turned negative. It didn't. Look, it's still green. And the 14 period moving average. Now I'm gonna do this, I'm making it a little thicker here. So, um, no, I want that right there. Uh, can I do it? Let me see if I can find, there it is. Click, click, and it says there, I'm just gonna make it a little thicker. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there it is, okay. So there it is, nice and thick, and not as thick as that, but very nice and thick. So here you are, and that's what I'm saying, we're in a holding pattern. Just every, every pullback is finding um, some kind of support. And it's still a valid rectangle pattern. I, keep, I usually keep this for a long time because and the same thing when you find when I finally do draw uh, a mid midpoint of the channel. Oh, come on, grab the little square. There it is. That is still going to be. Let me just make it nice and thick. Wait, there. 
and we'll see what happens. Because that's going to be the fulcrum up and down and up and down. Or all the resistance. All right, here we go. So I want you to show you these particular charts and say, look, as I see it right now, if this is a high-level consolidation and there's going to be a break, because all, all the bad news or the potential bad news is kind of being filtered out. It's going to the background. And you've got this pattern right here. Look how close we are to breaking to the upside of this dark news cloud cover that's gone on from the week of the uh, gone on from November of 2022 to now, and finally we're coming back. And look how many times we've tested this. Is, this is a beautiful inverted head and shoulders. He has your neckline. Is this going to break to the upside now, or does it have to pull back again? Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I wanted to show you that this is, for me, a really important moment in many ways. And the other aspect that is important is, let me just do this, go to different uh, sectors. So BTC, oh, I did the wrong thing. Here we go in there. And then go to this chart right here. So the question came in, could I look at um, Bitcoin in various forms? So the Bitcoin is walking the 14-period moving average, trying to push above the 9-period moving average in the day. Weekly chart is very good, but if you look at the left side high that was made in Bitcoin, uh, the G BTC continuous contract at 31,355, <clears throat> week of the 21st of April, and the high that was made on the 23rd of June at 32.025, you'll see that the 9 is way above the 14. The MACD is not as good, but it is positive. Stochastics rallied some, but it isn't as strong as it was, and the on-balance volume is much weaker. And as I've got this an alternate count. It's it's either an F or a C. But at the moment, I don't have to worry about that because it's this rectangle in the in the yeah the rectangle in the daily chart that counts, and that's the same thing. It's producing a rectangle formation, and that can last a lot longer as long as it doesn't close below. 29,450, and it's at 30,775 right now. So ETHE, which is, there we go. Uh, this is the uh, Grayscale Ethereum Trust. I used to have this all notated. I don't need more, but let me just do this to show you something. This is a spectacular move that we ran up with the GBTC, the Bitcoin uh, Best Trust. That's called. And we ran it all the way to the top of beginning the 12s and then all the way to the same thing. So then now that this one has come down, ethereal, and it's got the Eiffel Tower, now it's starting to try to build some support. So I'll talk about this as soon as we turn down to 88. Yes, it is a right now. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So what I like to do is to look at the chart pattern and say, what is the character of the stock? Does it fail at PTs? Does it make cup formations or arch formations very often? Does it go in a straight line and then take a huge dive like many biotech stocks? So Ethereum is trading right now at 10.12. It's up 15 cents. And you see this little cup formation. You see the way the 9 is over the 14, the price is over the 9. And then I've drawn a big rectangle. I don't like to draw the big rectangle and cheat that as the, the basis for my analysis. What I like to do is to think of it as the big one, going to the outer wicks of the most recent high and low, but then I narrow it. And that narrow one is really what tells you what's going on. And that's what I'm looking at. And that just says that if it starts to trade, and it doesn't have to close, if it can trade for an hour and a half above uh, 10.34 to 10.12 right now is a good chance it's going to try to tackle the high that was made on the 3rd of July at 10.59. But most important, you see the cup formations in the, oh, it upsets my eye when I see it lopsided like that. Let's just make it nice and smooth. There you are. So the U goes to a W formation with rising highs and rising lows. It just says that Ethereum monthly is just looking terrible. But the daily is improving and the weekly is trying to keep get, it keeps trying to get to the 11s. That's the resistance area. And I suspect that that's the way it's going. As long as it holds, I would say underneath that black 14 period moving average, 8.84. If it goes under 8.84 in the next week or two, that really starts to deteriorate the, the pattern itself. But right now it looks good. Another one is uh, uh, Roblox. Roblox, I haven't updated this for ages. Oh, I have updated it. All right, good. Not up updated it, but updated it. So A, B, all right. So this is trading up 51 cents at 43.97. Uh, here again, it's almost the same pattern. See the gap down, I was tr trying to fill it. has filled in the gap in the weekly chart. Uh, Roblox it does uh, gaming. Uh, um, okay. This didn't go negative, no. So I have to still keep that red plus sign over the peak E. So it has gaming technology, and it's going to peak A, peak B, even a C by a penny. Let me just see, 42.99, 42.99, 42.99. No, it doesn't. A, B, it's in leg C. But it is in this digestive consolidation phase after a big spectacular move and a gap down. So I do like it. Um, what I am going to say is, now, this is, uh, once again, in the Chavway methodology, our objective is get to a D, and that's where other things can happen. So it got to the D back in uh, May or early June, pulls back, then makes an attempt to make a new high, and it failed by a penny, I believe. Was that the 42, 19? Yeah, that was the 99 level. So you got a peak. Well, wait a minute. No, 42, 86, and 42... 99. Okay, so that's your peak D. Then it pulls back. I think this is a new buy mode. So I suspect that this is a leg C, 
look, here's your, hey, there's your low bar at the 37 or 30, uh, 37 level. This becomes A, but that is also an A. You have to count from this from this low. You have no choice but to count every single peak. That's your objective in the chapter. We've methodology. Uh, and this becomes a B, and that becomes a C. So, yeah, I like it, and I think it will go higher. And then I think it bumps into a lot of resistance, if I'm looking correctly at the chart pattern. Uh, that's Roblox. And the other one was you. Oh, you. Not there, right here. You is the symbol. And, and actually, this is also in the same field, right? Uh, this is, oh, I used to have this so well notated. Uh, this is called... Oh, Unity, uh, Unify Unity, Unity Software Inc. does the same thing. Unity Soft, Software Inc. Uh, I think it has to also do with gaming, but I think it has to do applications are applicable in other areas. So here we go, peak A, peak B. Leg C in the month. Yeah, it's just barely moving. But we've got a leg E. Probably it's an E in the weekly. Yes, I do like it. And making higher highs. Oh, boy. Is that a, uh, that's a double top there. Yeah, so I'm going to say A, B, C. There's no other way I can count it. That's a D. Therefore, that has to be an E. Did it go to an F here? And that's a G. Let's just make that a... Okay, 4507, 40 4507 was the high, 4508. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that is going to be called F and G slash B. I have, to, I have to give it both because the MACD hasn't yet crossed positive and the stochastic and 9 is way over the 14. This is all very good. But I would just say to you that this one is doing very well, but I think it's getting close to stalling. And that 37 area where the 200 period moving averages keeps dragging the price back. And I wouldn't be surprised if a halfway marker is right here with the 42.30 area. So I, I would say that there's a chance over the next week or two it could pull back to the 43s. But it is making higher highs and higher lows. Really good action. This is a stock that was once in the 200s. Did have a little tumble, 90% down to the 20 area. So all I can say is that this is a nice recovery. Next question came in. Uh, let me see. I did that, did that, did that. Uh, I wrote down. Yes, Duffy, QS. This is one that I've had on the list that we were going to buy. But look at that big move. And now it's stalling at the left side, right side price. Time matches is quantum scape core. Solid state batteries. This whole area is on fire. Well, actually, you shouldn't say that for batteries. No, they're not on fire. I'm sorry, sorry. I didn't say anything. Scratch that. They are doing extremely well. Um, moving up very sharply. I did the analysis, but it just kept moving, gapping up, and I didn't, as a screamer, that's what I wanted. 11.90 was the uh, high the 15th of February, pulls back down to the fives, and has a beautiful, look at this, it's so hot. I'm gonna talk about one that we got in again yesterday. This is one we've had a huge, over 100% gain, but I wanted to get in twice now we've got in, and we got stopped out, even though I made the entry point much lower than the day, the previous day's high, and the gap up, at the, that it, 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 it had a huge move to the downside. And then it went even higher this morning. It's done that twice. So this is one where, look at that pullback. Look at that peak A. As long as this initial low of 571 that was made on the 15th of May isn't taken out, look, you had to hold this. If you got in, that's what I'm saying. Trying to get, as we did in October of 2020, uh, was that October? No, the October of last year, and then I can't remember what it was. It we were still long from uh, 2020. If you can get the almost the exact or within a couple of points of the low, you've got such a nice cushion. You can just sit there and say, okay, you can pull back as much as you want as long as you're making higher highs, and in this case, higher lows. But look how steep the pullbacks are, and now it's gone straight up. So you wouldn't have known that at the 200 period moving average, it did stall for three days, but it only stalled and then closed green. And then look how it broke out. This is QS trading down 13 cents at 10.03 right now, making an F slash C resistance with a high today of 
uh, 10.44. So I think it's going to take a little bit of a breather and then it's going to try 411 and uh, 90 area. So I still like it, but I think the best move has been, uh, and the best entry has been taken up. I'll be back. We've still got stuff to look at and we've got to give a closing or think could be the close of the day. Buying keeps coming in. I'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, same again. Eight two seven. How about I think it's called metals. I can't to read that right now. It's trading at one point five one up a penny. A very very impressive uh, uh, pattern. And he says that speaking of batteries. Um, AQMS recycles metals into virgin material using an environmentally friendly, safer hydrolysis process. Yes. So it has this, it looks like a biotech, spectacular moves, and then it just gives it all up. But I think it is building a base that is very, very admirable. Uh, I, I do like it. Now it's a little, I mean, to get it, this is a very long term buy. What's the difference buying it at $1.60 if it wants to hit $8? So um, you have to think about it. I'm not I recommend this right now. I think it needs to pull back a little bit on balance volume. Here's a little overboard. I'm putting it on my list. I'll do a little more, maybe tomorrow, technical Friday. I'll do some work and, and, and see what I can think of it. But yes, this is really a good chart. So let me just go back to this for the moment because I think the market is really kind of struggling here. Some sectors are not so much struggling, but they're doing well. Look at this rectangle. How important is a rectangle formation if you can identify it? And how do you get out 
of that rectangle. We have to now look at a different, this is the one minute chart, another arch formation, and it can't hold that 200, sorry, the midpoint of 4539, or sorry, 4529 in the E mini. And look, slowly but surely, the uh, five minute is deteriorating, yet the nine is still above the 14. So watch this closely, and in the, in the 10 minutes, it's still very strong. So you need patience. That's the reason why I'm saying we need patience here because I am seeing some topping action shorter term, but until those nines really deteriorate, go negative, it takes a period of time. And just be very specific in what you're doing and have fairly tight stops. I think this is the best way to do it. Some things are working very well. So at the end of the day, if the Dow is goes negative, that'll say, okay, that's done for the day, maybe even into tomorrow. But if it comes suddenly back and it's up 100 points, that's impressive. I think it's going to weaken a little bit into the close. Have a